Well, uh, thank you for inviting me today, Daniel, and everybody else. Uh, my name is Peter Steidelt, and I work with a company called Lane. Uh, we're an architecture, urbanism, and design practice focused on developing cities, uh, founded by Nigerian architect Kunda um, We have offices in Amsterdam and Lagos, and currently we focus our work uh, mainly in Africa, where we have the most ongoing projects. Uh, we're not an NGO, sometimes people think we're an NGO, but we also do you know, big projects. I'm actually working right now on a big uh, office building for an oil company. Um, now, the challenge, of course, I'm to do to do something, just in case. I don't know if you care the back. Okay, very useful. This works. Um, now, the challenge, of course, why some of us, or maybe most of us, often think about is that is stated here in the Uneven Road Brief by MoMA. It's an exhibition that we're uh, participating in at the moment. Uh, it has just opened, and it says that in 2030, the world's population will be a staggering 8 billion people. Um, Two-thirds will live in cities, and most will be poor. So this is the challenge that we're facing. Um, now, this rate of urbanization, here you can see where that's happening worldwide. Uh, it's mainly in the global south, and of course, in Lagos, you see that every hour, 53 people uh, are added to the city. So these growth rates are staggering. Um, and through Africa, you see this urbanization popping up everywhere. These are, you know, modern cities. Um, Luanda and Angola, where we're doing another research project now, um, Dar es Salaam. Um, then about three, four years ago when I joined uh, the company, we started the African Water Cities project. Uh, first, we started looking at Africa, you know, where is GDP growing, uh, what are urbanized areas, what's net migration and population growth. Um, and we started to overlap that with the impact of climate change in Africa. So, because it's often said that even though Africa is not is least responsible for climate change, it's very much affected by it. Uh, it's getting flooded more and more often. And from these two overlapping conditions, we identified uh, 20 cities. This is kind of our to-do list. Um, three of them are yellow. It's because we've already we're already there on ground. The other ones we're still looking at it. Uh, and today, of course, I will talk mainly about Lagos uh, because our office is there and it's the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, Lagos is the, the economic heart of Nigeria. It has about 16 million people at the moment and it's, it's growing with about 800,000 people each year. Um, yeah, it's growing at staggering rates. Um, now, if you look at the density, well, I think we saw a graph like this earlier today. Uh, with Mumbai, these are kind of comparable diagrams, right? There are 60 million people in Lagos and 60 million people in the Netherlands. So you see that density is crazy, which translates into this daily condition that we might know when we, you know, Google or see images of Lagos. Uh, the average Lagosian spends about four hours per day in traffic conditions like this. Um, which means, you know, you're not only driving. This is also a market, this is also a community space. Everything is kind of moving very slowly uh, through the city like that. Uh, it's like an urban crawl. Um, now, Nigeria uh, is just, by the way, just earlier this year was pronounced the biggest economy in Africa. Uh, it's, it's, it's doing really, really well. Um, and how you see this back in a place like Lagos is that land value is uh, about the same as in Amsterdam, which I always think is kind of interesting to think about. Um, now, this translates into developments like this. This is a project called Echo Atlantic. Um, it's obviously marketed towards you know, the high-end population of Nigeria, which is only a very small portion. Uh, and, you know, even though maybe nice or maybe not nice, you know, it's, it's not going to be the solution to all of these people moving towards cities. This is uh, built for 250,000 people. Uh, that's about three months of people joining the city, so it's, it's not enough. Um, and the problem is in Lagos that um, yeah, housing is just not very affordable for the average Nigerian. Uh, there was just a report uh, released by McKinsey where they defined the definition of affordability gap, which really talks about the difference of what people can pay for a house and what they should pay. Um, and if you put this into a graph, you see that Lago Lagosians actually pay 15% of their income extra to a house than what they should pay. Um, 
Now, this 50% uh, is a very high number. You see the Randstad here in the Netherlands is very low. So, like here, housing is fairly priced. But in Lagos, it's really hard to find affordable housing. Um, and the result of that is that you see that housing creation really falls behind with population growth. Now, everything uh, below the, the yellow line, between the yellow and the black line, now these people, of course, have to live somewhere. So they live in what you or what we call in formal settlements. Uh, which brings me to a project that's very dear to me, where, where I've been working on for the past three years. Uh, it's the Makako Floating School, and it's an innovative mobile floating prototype for addressing social and physical needs in the age of rapid urbanization and climate change. Uh, just to zoom out a little bit more to the geographical condition of Lagos, this is Lagos. Um, in red, you see the mainly the, the urbanized areas. Um, you see the Lagos Lagoon in the middle, and most of the development now is actually sprawling towards the east, <coughs> where you see the white area. Now, in, in the heart of Lagos, where uh, land prices are actually the very highest, there is this community called Makoko, and they have the following innovation is that because literally land was too expensive, they were running out of land, they started building on water. So it's a community that's built on water. Um, it's estimated that there is about 100,000 people living there. Um, and yeah, what they do on water is that they work mainly in the sawing industry, which you see in the background. So they float in logs of trees, which are then sawed there and produced into timber for the rest of Nigeria. Um, and it's a fishing community, so people fish and smoke their fish and sell their fish. Uh, and they're boat builders. Uh, it's about 45 hectares big. Uh, you see here that there are some parts of the, of the community that are on land. Most of it is on water. Uh, there are drainage canals going through. Um, and these are the streets of Makoko. Like you, when you enter the community, you go with a big red arrow. Uh, you enter like an alley where you walk. At some point, you get to a jetty, and then you just continue on water. It's a very interesting way of moving through one city. Um, and when we were doing the, the research for the Makoko Floating School, we started looking at, okay, you know, what, what are the social amenities uh, that are there on ground now? And we saw that for 100,000 people, there's actually only one school. Um, and a lot of other things are missing there. Uh, if you zoom in a little bit more into Makoko, that it's, it's kind of interesting to see that even though it is, it's, there's no official planning involved, it, it almost looks like a grid. Um, it has to do, of course, with the circulation, that people have to be able to move through with large boats, but also the environmental uh, orientation of each building towards the sun and away from the wind, or away from the sun and away from the wind. Uh, yeah, and if you have some imagination, you see that it's almost looking like a plant community. Uh, this is one uh, house, what a house in Monaco looks like up close. Uh, and at the office, we have this saying that this is you know, maximum urbanization with minimum means. Like, there's literally not even land to build, there's just water, and yet 100,000 people live there. Um, now, most buildings there are one floor high, some of them are two floors, but most of them is only one floor high. Uh, here you see how they're built, so everything is built on stilts, and then a thin, uh, lightweight wood construction. Uh, this is a taxi, you know, taking a taxi through a mountain. Uh, shopping, so you have to go everywhere by boat, but actually most interesting is the floating retail, where you see that uh, boats themselves are the shop. Now there's people cooking on top of them, trading on top of them, putting all the boats together, making like a big, uh, marketplace out of it. Um, now, of course, there are also challenges in Makoko. It's We're not trying to fetishize poverty. Um, you know, the housing condition, the quality of housing is really bad. Uh, you know, there's a lot of garbage, there's not, a lot of, not enough drinking water, there's not enough schools. Um, and when, just before I joined Play, uh, we were asked, uh, or we kind of propose like, okay, is there something that we can do? Is there something that we can build or contribute? And they said, okay, um, please look into, you know, maybe we can do like an extension of the current school for like 150 more students. Uh, now, during the design process, there was kind of a defining moment what happened is that all of Makoko floods. And we asked the, the community like, oh, is this happening more and more? And yes, it was happening, you know, increasingly because of apparently 
climate change. And um, we then thought, thought, well, you know, why would we build here on stilts? Uh, and then it would, you know, our new school would be flooded all the time. So is there an alternative that we can look at when developing this school? And of course, we're also based in the Netherlands, which is interesting because here there's a lot of floating housing. So we actually went to Urk, where they built uh, the arcs that we see here in the canals. Uh, we moved around, you know, also with the local community, we started looking at how could we build a building that floats with only tools that are locally available. Um, and we formed, at this point, this was all self-funded and self-initiated, and then, you know, we kind of uh, uh, got official funding from the UN, uh, and there were a lot of partners in the project, uh, in the project involved uh, from that point on. Now, these are what these consultations with the community look like. We built a series of uh, models to, you know, discuss the design and see how we would build it. Um, and this is kind of then the final concept, is that we identified this problem, which is increasing sea levels. Um, then we combine that local technology with global technology, which is the floating part. Um, and we came up with an innovative uh, solution. Now, there is of course many ways that you can float a building. Uh, here we have, like I said, concrete barges, we have steel barges. Um, but of course you want to look at what is locally available. And we were literally looking at this picture thinking like, hmm, okay, these are all plastic barrels, you know, Nigeria's an oil economy. There are many uh, recyclable barrels there. Um, and then we decided, okay, let's try to float the building or build the design around floating on barrels. Now, these are some ways you were trying to find out, you know, how do we combine these barrels into a platform? How can we use it? How can we make a foundation out of it? And um, when we were also looking at, you know, floating technology, there were three basic things that we learned, is that uh, you want your building, it's the most important not to float. I mean, of course, it's important to float, but if you want to have a successful building, it must be stable. So staying afloat is not very hard, but you don't want to be in a building where, you know, you're going around like a boat. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that you need to have a low center of gravity, which makes you, you know, that's why sailboats have keels, to stay extra stable. Um, and the base of the building must never be smaller than the height. Now, of course, when you want to have a low center of gravity in your building, we started looking at, okay, so what shape has that naturally? Um, and of course, we all know that the triangle, its center of gravity is relatively low in the structure. So this form is actually the most stable form for a floating building. Now, we did all the calculations with our partners in Amsterdam, uh, and this is the this is actually the design. So it's just you know that triangle built with local technology on the barrels. Uh, this is also uh, the construction drawing. This was it. Uh, you see, like we saw earlier in the project by Marco, that we color coded all the elements, uh, which would make it easy for construction. And it's really meant to be a framework for whatever. I mean, at this point, it's a school. But you can also imagine how this could become a house or a church or anything like that. These are the building elements. Uh, we, you know, because of course there's a local sawing industry, so we identified the right wood. You know, the hardest wood for close to the water, and then the light, lightweight wood uh, on top. Um, and here you see how the frame that we developed or and engineered uh, can be used. You know, this is just try all the bypass, but you can fill them up with anything that people are already building with. Of course, it's also scalable. Um, you can stretch it, you can combine two of them, you can do uh, all kinds of things. And one of the interesting things is because that in Makoko there are no, uh, there's no formal infrastructure. So there's no electricity, there's no road, there's no sewage, there's no nothing. So you, when you develop a building there, it really is like an island. So when you want to have energy, you know, we start looking at PV cells. Uh, we have a compost toilet, uh, we, we collect our own water. Um, so this is the first day of construction. It's getting all the, the barrels in place, 256 barrels. Um, and of course, working with the local carpenters who are extremely skilled, but they built mostly from memory, so in a kind of a way to formalize you know, what we're doing and agree on details that we're uh, building, we um, made drawings like this um, 
Now this is one uh, uh, prototype, the first prototype of one segment that we developed, uh, and this actually holds 16 barrels. We built 16 of those, and every time um, we connected four of them, because then it was still small enough to float it out to the open water. And at that point we connected it into a platform, which is actually a piece of, you know, it's, it's the largest piece of land in Mapuco, it's like 100 square meter, um, and there is no other place that is that big, so kids were studying football and stuff like that. Uh, this is structure going up, we had about eight guys building for one month for the platform, and one month for the floors going up. Um, and the whole building only had eight details, which are just extremely simple. You know, they're just, I mean, you and I, we could all build it very quickly, there's nothing complicated about it. This is reaching the highest point, and the structure when it was finished. Kind of a nice building environment. Uh, and, you know, once we had stairs and we had floors and we had railing, then, you know, people started to climb the building en masse, because it's the highest building in Macaco. It's literally like a local skyscraper. So you can, it's the first time people can see over their own community. Um, and then, you know, we put the walls there. Now in the middle you have like, kind of like this box, right? With where the walls are. These are two classrooms. Then the ground floor is play area. And on the top floor we have, the, the, there are two workshop areas. It's about for 150 children. Putting the roof. Uh, now, one important thing is when we developed uh, this platform is that we wanted to be able to, you know, what, what happens when one of these barrels leaks. So it's it's designed that you can always take out those six nails which you see in the top of the beam. At that point, the barrel, you know, they pop up because of course they're being held time by the beam. You can replace it, push it back down, and fix the beam back. So you can always fix a leak or whatever if there's a problem. Of course, it's very rewarding to see, you know, the, the impact that uh, the building has had uh, on the community. You know, uh, there are now 100 students who can go to school. Uh, once the building was finished, it also like the, the, that floating re retail that I showed earlier. They all started moving towards the school. It became like a, a big trading ground. Um, of course, it gave employment, and this is uh, uh, Legos just got their first Monopoly game. And of course, the cheapest real estate is Makoko. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of tourism before the project. Uh, you know, Makoko was kind of considered like a dangerous place. You know, there's criminals, don't go there, blah blah blah. And now there's a lot of tourism going on, which you know generates income. So this was about a year ago when we completed the building. Uh, No, before we decided to put uh, kids there, we just tried, tried it on uh, adults. So this was kind of a beta testing the design, but it held up very well. Uh, yeah, there were all kinds of cultural performances on water around around the building. Um, and yeah, it, it, was re it, was really, it was really a cool day. Uh, of course, it being a prototype, we hope that in the future, people start building more of them. Uh, this is not something that necessarily we intend to do, but it would be great if there's suddenly another one floating around, um, you know, and even create a whole city. Now, just reflecting back on the community which is existing, which is Mabuko, uh, it's a highly dense and urbanized area, yet it has no roads, no land, and no modern infrastructure. And we think is this innovation of people building on water could be a model for coastal African cities uh, in the future. Now this is a, a project, this is the MoMA image that we just finished, uh, where, we did, where we also uh, try to apply you know, that building on water in the image uh, for the city of Lagos. Thank you. <laughs>